Hey guys, and welcome back. What a week it was in the markets. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about big tech. Nvidia down 13.45% and big money rotating into risk off, except for maybe Twitter stock up 17.6% for the week. Healthcare, J&J now at $182, Pfizer at $55, Walmart at all-time highs at $157, Costco at $600. Also breaking all-time highs, Target, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Household, Procter & Gamble, Tobacco, Energy, Utilities, and Real Estate. Meanwhile, names like Booking.com and Travel down almost 10%, Starbucks 11%, Tesla 5.5%, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, AMD, the financial credit services, Visa, MasterCard, the banks down as well. And crypto down on the week, Bitcoin at 42,500, down seven or 8% over the past week. And Ethereum at 3,200, down six, 7% over the past week. Heading on over to fear and greed, we're now at 46, still in neutral. And it's been like this more or less for the past week. However, a month ago, we were at extreme fear at 21, right? right before we saw that three week rip rally. Over the past five days, the S&P 500 was down 1.22%. So not all that bad because money was rotated within those 500 companies. Whereas in the NASDAQ, the tech heavy NASDAQ was down 3.74% over the past five days. So Monday was still a pretty decent day. And then after on Tuesday, things started going downhill from there. But the main thing as I'm going to show you guys in a moment is what happened on the charts. But before we get to that, let's take a look at Elon Musk and his entrance into the Giga Texas with the Cyber Rodeo on Thursday. And that is the world's richest and one of the most influential men in the world. He really comes off as the Tony Stark of our time. Also guys, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. Hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and take a look at my description for my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok down below. Check it out. All right, so I first want to take a look at the NASDAQ. Firstly, that does not look good. That does not look healthy. So again, Monday was a decent day. We had a sell-off on Tuesday. People took profit. But what happened on Wednesday is we gapped down below the moving averages, found resistance at them, and they continued going down. We got confirmation the next couple of days because, again, we tried testing it, we couldn't, and then continued selling off. So if you're asking me, am I bullish or bearish after what just happened, it would definitely be bearish, but again, however, not to mention the gap we do have from Wednesday's open. Maybe that one wants to fill, maybe not, we'll have to see. And one thing I've been neglecting, and I want to put it more into my technical analysis with you guys, is the weekly and taking a look at the different time frames because it's, because it's so important we look at the information differently. It's the same information, but also telling it to you in a different way. So clear resistance at the 370 level, we got rejected. We opened above both moving averages and ended up closing below it. So taking that for what it's worth, looking at the SPY, again, a much better story is being told. We opened and closed above the 20 EMA on the weekly. And taking a look at the daily, again, looking much healthier, but we're seeing a lot of indecision candles. So we still don't know whether we want to go bearish or bullish. We still need more confirmation. We're kind of in the middle of both zones. And I think the market is really unsure, especially after all the hawkish commentary that's come out of the Fed ever since earlier this week. Heading on over to the VIX. So we had a spike. We found resistance at the 50 EMA, currently hovering at 2117. But again, we're seeing a lot of indecision after two big rejection days. But also when we combined our technical analysis with the fact that the fear and greed index is neutral, again, no one really knows what's going on or what's expected. It's a very uncertain time. The market hates uncertainty. Bonds have still been selling off as the two year and the 10 year keep climbing. There was an inversion earlier for a few days, but now uh, it's no longer with the two year at 2.522% and the 10 year at 2.71%. So with bonds selling off, the dollar or the dollar index has been growing stronger. And zooming out, we can see ever since about June of last year, this trend has been really strong. And especially with all the geopolitical issues going on, dollar and commodities usually are looked at as safe havens. All right, and looking at Bitcoin, it was unable to hold the $46,000 support, now below both moving averages on the daily. Similar to the market is also now in no man's land. We don't know whether this one wants to go bearish or bullish until it gives us some kind of confirmation. 
Ethereum relative to Bitcoin is looking stronger, finding support on that 20 EMA on the daily. Again, you'd really want to see this area hold. If we, if we do get more weakness, that may be an indication of what Bitcoin will want to do next as well. All right, so looking at big tech, starting off with Tesla, this one peaking around 1150. Cool. And I called it on the channel when I connected the top of these peaks. And also looking at the open interest expiring on April 8th, there's a big call wall at the $1,200 strike price. Also been filling this gap, approaching the moving averages, so will we find support? In recent history, the 20 and the 50 EMAs haven't been really holding up as support. Although the 20 EMA loves to act as resistance, so take that for what it's worth. Tesla tends to trade in every $50 increment. So again, if we break 1,000, then maybe 950 would be next. If that breaks, then 900, so on. So let's see this week if the 1,000 can hold. If not, 950 would be my next target, and then 900. And looking at it on the weekly time frame, that is a pretty ugly candle, so take it for what it's worth, especially after these three very strong candles. All right, and taking a look at NVIDIA, this one also on the weekly, we opened above the 20 EMA and currently sitting right at that 50. And when we zoom out, we see that the 50 EMA has acted as very nice support for NVIDIA over the past couple of years. And even buying it this year under the 50 would have been a good decision. On the daily time frame, it is looking ugly. We were as high as like 270, finishing off at 230. A big gap down below the moving averages and just more weakness. But again, when you look at that weekly and seeing this, it does give you a little bit more reassurance if you are looking for positioning in NVIDIA. And taking a look at Microsoft, and I'm actually even going to zoom out to the monthly on this one just to show its track record, that 20 EMA really holds up. We touched it in both February and March at 275, 270. Looking at the weekly, whenever it's below the 50, often a good buying opportunity. The way I look at this, you break 320 with conviction, you're looking at all-time highs next. Heading on over to Google, also had a stellar 2021, has been pretty volatile over the past six months. When you zoom out and take a look at the monthly, seeing the crash of 2020, before that, the 20 EMA really holding up. For us, that would be around 24, 2500. That's if Google is to go that low, it would be a great buying opportunity, a very ugly week, reaching the highs of about 2850. That being the neckline, we have to break if we want to see test all time highs. Otherwise, ugly gap down, indecision candle, and confirmation of more selling off. Amazon on the weekly looking pretty ugly with uh, the tweezers, two rejections in a row. And on the monthly, we're sitting right at the 20 and looking at January, February, and March. We were actually below the 20 EMA. We didn't quite touch the 50, but that being as low as it got for Amazon. Zooming out even more, 20 has been amazing support for the past decade. All right, and lastly, taking a look at Apple on the monthly. Again, for the past decade, whenever things were hitting the fan, the 50 EMA held up as amazing support. And if it wasn't the 50, it was the 20. We aren't quite at that right now, so we could be potentially overvalued. But again, Apple is the biggest company in the world. When you look at Apple on the weekly, the last couple of weeks, not looking too favorable. Again, getting those tweezer candles, getting rejection at 180, 175. However, on the daily, it's not looking all too bad, but again, it's a tale of two markets. It has so much weight on the indices. The same way we're seeing indecision with the SPY and the QQQ, that depending whether that seasonality comes or if we get more weakness, will push the S&P and the NASDAQ in either direction. Otherwise, that is the end of my video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, let me know in the comments, what do you think is going to happen in April? Are we going to recover? Is seasonality going to come into effect or do we have more weakness ahead of us? If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash that like button and check out the description, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. See you guys in my next video.